Hello, my name is Gabriel Jimenez, and I will be presenting the work title Flavonoids as Potential Inhibitors of SARS-CoV-2 Main Protease. So flavonoids are phytochemical compounds that have uh, proven antiviral activity against different uh, varieties of viruses, including, including coronaviruses. In fact, recently it was demonstrated that flavonoids could, some flavonoids could inhibit the main protease of SARS-CoV. And as you may know, the differences between SARS-CoV-2 and SARS-CoV main proteases are just 12 amino acids. This fact uh, supports the idea that maybe flavonoids could be used as therapeutic agents in the current uh, pandemics. But there are some problems with, with working with flavonoids. And the first one is that there is not an easy access big flavonoid structural database or box to test against uh, the main protease. And I think this is the main reason why the current investigations only focus it in libraries, in evaluating libraries with less than uh, roughly 100 flavonoids. And the second problem is that flavonoids, as well as other phytochemicals, are usually panacea interference compounds, or as they are wide, widely known, pains. But what are pains? Pains are uh, compounds that establish non-specific interactions with the proteins you, are, uh, you want to inhibit and thus they led to false positives. The mechanisms of how these uh, pains form these non-specific uh, interactions are uh, multiple. But uh, for flavonoids, there is one uh, most important mechanism and is the formation of colloidal aggregates. So colloidal aggregates are the formation of net-like structures inside the test tube where you are evaluating your drug, that is the, so the water solution when you, where you have your protein and, and the drug you want to evaluate. And this uh, net-like structure inhibits uh, inespecifically the protein uh, by denaturating it. But these nets are only formed in the test tubes, I, I mean in the in vitro conditions. For example, if you get a, a, a positive result based in these net uh, colloidal aggregates, then the next step would be uh, testing it in an in vivo model. But when you deliver that uh, drug into your model organism, uh, it, it, it's not going to form that uh, net structures inside uh, the organism body because these colloidal aggregates only occur in the water test tube. So you will be facing a false positive as you get in your uh, model evaluation, in your in vivo model evaluation, a negative result, but in your in vitro evaluation, a um, um, positive result. And the same uh, stuff can happen in, in docking. Most uh, docking problems, pro programs will give you uh, these uh, non-specific interactions at, as uh, very favorable and you will uh, get a very uh, favorable binding energy, but you are, will be facing also a false positive. So how to avoid false positive, uh, positives when working with a library with this kind of compound? If you are working in vitro, the, uh, you may want to use a compound that reduces the, uh, the surface tension of the system. Uh, you can use, for example, Triton X100, to reduce the surface tension and avoid the formation of these nets and thus avoiding the uh, false positive results. But how about the uh, in silico counterpart? counterpart? Uh, conveniently, these paints have some uh, chemical groups that are common across them. So by applying an algorithm that recognizes these patterns, you can get rid of these uh, molecules and thus reducing your probability to have false positives. So our first objective was to create a big uh, flavonoid box, but also a pain-free flavonoid box, or at least we wanted to. Obviously we can't uh, achieve that by just in silico methods, but we wanted to approach to that, to that aim, to that uh, goal. So by that, uh, we first uh, tried to uh, perform a quick search in three different databases. That is Drogbank, PubChem, and, and Campbell. But we end up with roughly 100 and 150 flavonoids. And we wanted more as we uh, read in the literature that using small uh, uh, libraries 
you can get good results. We wanted to further analyze more flavonoids in order to learn more how these compounds inhibit the main protease. And for that, we keep searching and found this uh, Japanese uh, web database that is called Metabolomics. That is a wiki web, uh, web page that has more than 6,000 flavonoids. Until now, there are registered at least um, roughly 7,000 flavonoids between the natural occurring and the synthetic ones. So this Japanese uh, database has pretty much all the flavonoids registered until now. So the problem with this uh, database is that it, it is a wiki. So it is designed for just one click, one search. It is, it is not designed for a bulk download of all the components that it has and then to then uh, create the, generate the 3D structure and then uh, apply a high throughout with virtual screening, for example. So we needed to apply some kind of protocol to extract all the information that I will uh, speak, that I will uh, tell you a little bit later. But after applying these protocols of data mining, we end up with a flavonoid database that, then, that we upload to the FAF Drugs 4 uh, server, which has an algorithm for recognizing these moieties that are common to pains. And after recognizing the molecules that could be pains, we uh, uh, filter them and end up with a database of 4,887 compounds. So how we web scrap this metabolomics uh, database? First, we wanted to, to extract all the flavonoids IDs registered in this uh, web page. And to do that, we enter to the index page, which is organized by letter, as you can see here. So uh, each letter, each letter web page has an uh, address that has the following structure. First, a base URL that is between quotes plus the letter of, uh, that you are evaluating, in this case, the A. So the address of this page would be this base uh, web address uh, in quotes plus letter A. So we uh, basically uh, create a script to iterate along all the letters of the alphabet and perform a sum of strings between this uh, base uh, address and the letter and then to struct all the text inside the web page and, and store it in a list. And after that, with that list, we also iterate, we create also a for loop to iterate along that ID list and perform another sum of strings with uh, this um, base URL in quotes plus the ID of the list. And then after iterating that, for example, we can see here in this uh, yellowish table, uh, a result of, search of entering an address, uh, this base address with a, with a specific ID, uh, we, get, uh, we, we can see that it's a, a table data frame. So we tell the script that after entering to each of these individual IDs that are iterated along over the, sorry, over the list, uh, we tell the script to extract the formula, the average mass, and the smile and to order it in a dot, uh, .csv uh, frame. And with that, uh, we got our flavonoid database and we wanted to try it in three different sites of the protein. First, the SVS, that is the catalytic region of the protein. We wanted to search for candidates to occupy this region and inhibiting it. But we also wanted to test more different sites. For example, the dimerization interface. As we know that the monomeric uh, form of the main protease uh, has very low enzymatic activity. So by uh, finding a molecule that could inhibit the formation of the dimer, we can also inhibit the protein. And also we wanted to assess the possibility of allosteric inhibition, as maybe the flavonoid could bind another region far from the, binding, from the substrate binding site and change the conformation of the enzyme and inhibit it. So we predicted a cryptic site by using the tool cryptosite from Salilab, which gives you a set uh, of residues with high probability to be part of a allosteric site. And after that, we perform the docking. So we use our database to dock against, for example, in this case, the SBS. And we, for, for these sites, we follow a parallel virtual screening so we use two conformations of the enzyme. First, 
The first one was retrieved from the co-crystal 6LU7, which is a co-crystal between the main protease and an inhibitor called N3. And also we use um, a free conformation of the enzyme retrieved from the crystal 6YB7. And we perform two uh, docking protocols, one with each um, structure. And we perform this in Autodoc Bina, and we get a list of the best energy post of each ligand. Uh, we order it by binding energies and get the top 100, one top for each uh, docking process. And then we wanted to reevaluate this top by uh, another scoring function using Autodoc GPU. And um, by using Autodoc GPU, uh, we get not only the binding energy, but we also get the population of that solution. I mean, you get for one binding mode, your binding energy, and also how many calculations converged in that solution, how many calculations predicted a similar uh, binding mode of that uh, with, with, the, with a similar binding energy. So you get two parameters, two terms, an energetic term, which uh, the term, uh, st statistical thermodynamics tell us that a more negative one is the most probable one. And also we get a heuristic term, which tell us that the most uh, populated the cluster is, the most uh, solutions converge in that binding mode, the most probable that binding mode exists. So to sum up these uh, two terms, we apply the 2D score. So 2D score was uh, developed by Blanco Capurro, I think in 2019, and it's a, 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 an arithmetic sum of the normalization of the binding energies multiplied by a negative number, uh, minus one, plus the normalization of the, num of the population of the cluster. So that we get a score that sum up the energy term and the heuristic term and help us to automatically in a script uh, choose the best pose, the most probable pose. So after getting the best pose of each ligand by 2D score, we uh, wrap up two top 30 lists ordered by binding energy. Then we cross reference those two lists and get a consensus of five candidates uh, that could uh, inhibit the substrate binding site. And for the demerization, the demerization interface, sorry, and the proposed uh, cryptic region, as we didn't have uh, two different conformations to test, we also, we, we just perform a simple virtual screening approach following the same steps, uh, sorry, the same steps presented here. Uh, and virtual screening in Vina, uh, validation docking and auto, auto dock GPU, etc. Et, et and uh, here is a figure of that summary all of our results. The first row represents the candidates uh, with its respective uh, hydrophilic interactions uh, that are candidates to inhibit the substrate inside. The second row are the candidates likely to inhibit the demerization site, and the third one is uh, the list of candidates that are likely to inhibit the cryptic site. It is worth noting that all of our uh, compounds, uh, candidates to inhibit the demerization site, inhib uh, sorry, introduce one of their phenolic rings in a novel cavity, a, a, a very small hole present in the structure, in both of uh, the structures, 6YB7, and says uh, 6 uh, LU7. So this uh, novel cavity is also formed by residues with high probability to be uh, part of a cryptic uh, site, predict as predicted by crypto site. Uh, so maybe this uh, interaction of this phenolic ring inside this novel cavity could be the beginning of a formation of a new uh, pocket, a new cryptic site, but uh, we need to confirm, we, we, we would need to confirm this in molecular dynamics studies. But I'm giving you some spoilers because we performed already the molecular dynamics and see how this um, hole expands after the interaction. But as we haven't uh, uh, fully analyzed these results, I, I'm not uh, entering in much details into it uh, right now. 
So that's pretty much all. Uh, there are more calculations, as I uh, told you before, that are currently underway. The first one is the uh, molecular dynamics of the protein drug complex. And the second one is a risk scoring uh, of risk scoring of MMPBSS as a to, uh, to risk score that drugs that remain associated more than 50% of the molecular dynamics. Uh, thanks for your attention. <laughs>